Hello guys and welcome to another exciting episode here on the North Farms. My name is Ezekiel. If this is your first time coming across the channel, this year is North Farms. We talk basically on rabbitry and more. So if you are new to the channel, do us a favor and subscribe to the channel, okay? We usually post videos concerning rabbitry. So if you are a new rabbit farmer and you want to learn things, I think this is a channel that is suitable for you. And if you have passion in farming, it's equally a channel that you can consider subscribing to, okay? So for today's episode, we are going to be doing something that it's uh, very, very relevant for those that are beginning farmers, okay? And, and I'm going to give you, and if you have the thought of going into a rabbit farm or going into the rabbit industry, but you haven't really found valuable reasons to venture into it i'm going to give you some reasons that you could consider then i think you weigh the options to see whether you really still want to go into it or not but i know at the end of the day you are going to join us okay you will join us all right so i'm going to be taking you to why you need to start rabbit farming today okay or why you need to start rabbit farming in the next month in the next year to come okay so the first on my list is that it requires um, low capital, okay? I know this is something that is more of a relief to most of the investors out there because you wouldn't want to be uh, putting in huge sums of money into the business, okay? Rabbit farming is such that most of the capital you invest in is in the, your caging system and also in your breeds, okay? I think partly in your feeding. Aside that, I think that's basically um, what requires most most of your money, okay? So rabbit farming is such that it requires minimal capital, okay? So you're not going to be investing huge sums of money as compared to, let's say, uh, good farming or poultry or even fish farming. You're not going to be putting huge sums of money into it, okay? Now, the second one is that it requires uh, less skill, okay? It requires minimal, minimal skill. You realize that mostly for uh beginning farmers they engage in some maybe a week a week training after they are good to go then you can start in the process then you'll be learning some of the things along the line so the skill acquisition is very very low and it's such that it's very transparent and very easy for you to understand okay no uh there's no hidden secrets in rabbit farming okay there's no hidden secrets in rabbit farming you can pick them up that's if you are ready to learn you can pick that you can easily pick them up and you'll be good to go now the third one is that there's less uh, it requires less space okay so now let's compare it to uh cattle farming okay you would uh you would understand that for the cattle farmers they require huge space okay they require huge space to accommodate maybe about five to ten animals and that space, if you use it for a rabbit tree, you'll be housing close to a 50 animals, okay? You'll be housing close to a 50 plus animals. So the space requirement for, let's take it, each individual rabbit, it's two feet by two feet, okay? That's the standard, it's two feet by two feet, and that's just some small space, okay? So with your small land, you, should, you would be able to start rabbit farming. With your backyard, you would be able to start rabbit farming, okay? so there's no need to fear when it comes to space you asking yourself would you get space and all that it requires just minimal space okay so you can still start it in your backyard in your in your small farm that you have and it's equally good for urban farmers you know it's good for urban farmers because maybe let's take you live in a rented apartment and your landlord doesn't have problems with you having a farm at the backyard I think you can set it up and you'll be making some decent income from it okay so now let's move to the next it's suitable for all age groups okay this is a part that i like very very much it's suitable for all age groups now let's take it to uh when our uh men and women retire mostly when they retire you realize that they do less work they are more relaxed they don't do much work there's something that you can recommend to them and they can be doing it it doesn't require much of their time you just need to go in do the cleaning do the feeding then you are done basically that's it and you are done okay so it doesn't require uh, it's good for all age groups whether it's a kid it's an adult it's an aged person 
it's good it's good for all age groups and they can pick it up and they'll be good to go okay so now let's move to the next one now these animals are suitable and quiet they are not like fowls guinea fowls they are not like uh the cows that will be making noise in areas where you live close to a lot of neighbors you realize that they'll be complaining of the noise which is bad if you live in an urban setting you realize that most of your uh, surrounding neighbors will be complaining of noise and all that then you be i think you'll be forced to shut down so these are animals that you can keep in your backyard and people your neighbors wouldn't even realize you even have animals there okay they don't make noise or anything like that they are very quiet and they don't disturb okay so it's suitable for urban dwellers if you are afraid that you want to go into rabbit farming but you live in an urban setting i've cleared your doubt on it you can do it okay you can do it these animals won't make a sound okay now let's move to the next one which is uh rabbit consume less when you compare rabbits to poultry you realize that poultry they consume more okay they consume more rabbits they just take about 150 grams of that's pellets 150 grams of pellets and it's it's good for them okay it's good for them they don't consume much feed when you're comparing to goat sheep they just take just a minimal okay so when it comes to cost wise acquiring feed frequently acquiring feed and all that rabbit is going to uh, cut down your cost when it comes to feeding that's if you are come uh, you want to go into livestock production but you don't know which form of livestock to go into okay so rabbits will consume less and they will save your money all right so now uh, rabbits produce quickly that's one uh, distinctive feature when it comes to rabbit farming rabbits produce very very quickly okay they would be able to produce all well on my farm they are able to produce four times in a year okay and if you are really serious and you are taking the business very very serious you would be able to make back your income that you invested into the business okay so this is something that you can easily pick up and you'll be able to make some decent income getting to some six months or in a year time okay so now the next one will be that uh, rabbits have other streams of income that you can generate from aside selling of the animals to consumers okay they have other streams of income that you can generate from whilst you do the farming you can even start the rabbit farming and <clears throat> in about two months time you will be able to start even in a month time you can start making sales that's if the people for those commodities are available the people that demand for them are available okay now i'm going to give you an example rabbit urine is uh, a good source good source of fertilizing your farm okay it's very very good for your farm and if you're able to get demand for this uh, rabbit urine and the rabbit poop as well you realize that you've been making some streams of income whilst you've been waiting for your first batch of uh, bunnies to get ready for sale so now you see that uh it's giving you a different stream of income that you can be making and even in the long run if you take the business very seriously you realize that you would be selling other things like maybe cages and uh rabbit accessories like nipples and uh, nipple tubes and all that <clears throat> so it's going to give you other streams of income aside the animals that you are farming okay so now the concept of rabbit farming helps to re release stress okay now i find myself coming to the rabbit tree not because i've come to check on the animals but i just simply come here to sit and get peace of mind i don't know about you but mostly it's good you come it releases you yeah, like it releases you of thoughts and all that okay if you want peace of mind you can engage in rabbit farming now you realize that some people go to the hospitals and doctors advise them to start gardening they should start doing gardening okay and it isn't that the doctor is trying to punish the patient or something like that okay he's trying to reduce the stress level of the patient he has realized that the stress level of the patient is growing higher and higher okay so he wants him or her to engage in an activity that is going to take off his mind like take him off from thinking too much getting focused on the ground 
because it's a responsibility he has given to you and maybe every evening or every morning he has it in his head or in his mind that he's going to the garden to water the plants or the crops or anything like that so it's the same thing when it comes to rabbit farming you would be able to free up your mind when you uh, engage yourself in rabbit farming maybe you have a job that requires most of your time you go to work and you work so hard and you come and you are very very stressed rabbit farming you can just walk to your backyard sit there and admire your animals okay you watch how the rabbits move about you might even learn a thing or two you might be surprised you learn a thing or two about rabbits okay so now i hope these 10 reasons are valuable reasons that will get you started on your rabbit farming business okay this should be enough to uh motivate you to start a rabbit farming business it doesn't require much like i said earlier on you can uh pick it up and see how it goes now i'm going to be taking you to let's take it you've made up your mind you want to start but you don't even know in the first place what are the things i will need to start a rabbit farming business okay what are the things that i need to acquire before my rabbits even come to the farm in the first place okay i'm not going to leave it empty i'm going to be uh, giving you all the information that you need okay so now the first thing it's not it's not a material or anything of that sort but it's more of a mindset okay now the first thing is that you need to develop passion for the rabbit farming okay that's the most important thing to me that's the most important thing when times get tough when times get hard it's this same passion that is going to be getting you going okay so now the first thing is to get calculate that passion for rabbit farming okay you need to have the zeal for the animals okay when times get hard it's the same zeal that is going to uh push you through all right okay so now let's start you need first of all you need your housing okay you wouldn't want to bring the animals and there's no place to keep them okay so you need a form of housing and for me i would require two form of housings for you i've spoken earlier on housing and i'll tell i'll still tell you to go either by the wooden cage system or by the wire cage system okay for the floor system i don't really know but I wouldn't require I wouldn't recommend it to you guys out there okay I wouldn't recommend it to you guys out there now the second uh, item or the second thing you need to keep in check is the feeding of your animals even before your animals come you need to be able to source a uh, good quality feed for your animals you need to be able to clear your conscience that when your animals come they are not going to be struggling in terms of feeding and all those things okay you need to ensure that there's um, there's a lot of feed to take you about two months three months okay you can source feed without any form of problems okay so now i'll tell you to check around for feeds that are near you okay you can take advantages of the grasses that grow around you and you can be using that to supplement aside the concentrates you buy okay so now the first the the second thing i'll tell you to check when it comes to feeding is source a reliable uh feed shop where you can acquire your concentrates okay you know some of the feed shops you they are not so reliable let me see they are not so reliable you go there this particular feed is there you go there the next day and it's not there okay so you need to get a reliable place where you can always get the feed you give to your animals and please don't frequently change your feed okay don't frequently change your feed if not necessary all right okay so and the third thing i'll tell you to keep in check when it comes to feeding is to source a good uh look for a good source of fiber for your animals when you look at the digestive system of rabbits they require most of fiber okay so i'm going to tell you if you can go into hay production okay go into hay production it's going to uh source that uh, deficiency in terms of uh hay shortages and all that okay so look for a good source of fiber it might not necessarily be you cultivating hay but if you have another feed source that can provide you with the hay nutrient aspects i think then you should go into it and make sure you keep that particular uh 
item in check okay make sure it's always available for your animals because they require hay a lot all right and of course you can make sure there's always water make sure there's ample water for your rabbits okay they will always require water to aid them in their digestion process so provide them with enough water and they'll be good to go all right so now let's move to the third item that you need okay to start a successful rabbit farming and the third item you need is to then go and acquire your breeds okay acquire good breeds from good farmers okay and now i'm going to give you some things to keep in check when you go to acquire your breeds now the first thing you do is to pay farm visits first of all pay the farm visit pay farm visits even before you have you uh declare your mindset to the farmer that you want some breeds from his farm okay you can pay farm visits look at the animals look at their sanitation what they feed on the management systems medications and all that okay keep keep uh, keep it in mind that you are going to take these animals and you are going to breed them okay so you need to see the results on the farmer's farm okay before you even before you take them to your farm and you should start the breeding process okay all right so now ask for records of the farm you can make inquiries from the farmer how he keeps his records and you can maybe have a look at it to see how it's it's done so that when you start your own farming you know how to 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 go about it okay so now you can check the lineage of the breeding stock you are acquiring let's take it that you are acquiring about three dose okay three dose from three different families okay so now you can acquire some knowledge by who is the father of this do who is the mother of this do where are its uh where are its brothers and sisters just look at their sizes do they tally is there any form of uh, deficiency in them check for uh, all those things and i think it, it it will help you look for good stock okay and now make sure you ask questions okay ask a lot of questions from the farmer because you are a new farmer that you are going to the business and you need the thing that will make you strong is knowledge okay knowledge is power ask a lot of questions when you are breeding the animals how do you go about it okay when you want to win how do you do winning and i'll tell you make sure you don't leave the farmer's farm without taking his contact or finding a way of always getting in touch with him okay from time to time ask uh, him questions you can call him ask him questions and clarify your doubts okay that's the only way you can be very equipped in terms of uh, diseases and all those things ask him okay ask him and get informed all right so now the fourth thing the fourth and the last thing that you will need you will require to ensure a successful rabbit farming business would be to uh, acquire your face eight kits okay as much as you aim for a uh, good health on your farm you need to have it at the back of your mind that eventually there will be a time where some form of illness will fall in your farm and you need to be ready when that when that time comes okay you don't want to be taken on away all right so there are some medications that uh they are a must okay they are a must that you must have them on your farm because these medications do not only uh cure a specific uh, form of disease or illness it can also be used for other uh, other form of illness as well right now you would uh let's take ivermectin for for instance now you realize that ivermectin is good for ear canker and is good for uh, mites too as well so now this is a dual purpose uh, drug that you need to have on your farm so the first one i think i've already mentioned it to you so you need to acquire ivermectin okay now the second one you need uh sulfonol or maybe sulfadimidine okay for your coccidiosis and all that now the third one will be you need gv and that's for your animals okay you realize that these animals live in cages and maybe the cages might have some sharp edges in them that will give them wounds and when that happens you need a uh, gv that will help uh, heal the the wound okay or better still if you can get a uh, wound oil i think it will still serve the same purpose 
when you keep these animals in groups most leaders when you win them they might uh, engage in a fight and some may be hurt so you need this uh, GV genital violet or you need wound oil to uh, handle that aspect okay and you need some form of antibiotics okay just in case it's 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 an aspect that you equally need to keep in check just in case because your rabbits are such that as time goes on some of them would uh, start sneezing and doing all those things so you need some form of antibiotics to keep on your farm so that when that happens you can easily uh, solve that problem okay so guys i think basically that's what i have for you for you uh, in this session so i hope you've learned a thing or two and for you investors and for you beginning pr prospective beginning farmers out there if you want to go into rabbit farming i think i've given you the basics that you need for the rabbit farming earlier on i would be giving you a breakdown of uh just how much a beginning farmer would need i think that will be a separate video on its own just how much a beginning farmer will need to start a rabbit farming i'll give you the breakdowns how much a cage will cost your feeding systems your breeding and all that okay but that's going to be in a separate video all right but i hope you've learned a ten, like i said and give us a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed and share it to our uh, intending farmers share it to existing farmers they think they would benefit from this specific video and until i see you again it's a goodbye